You're listening to Cultivation Elevated, hosted by Michael Williamson, where we discuss vertical farming and the future of cannabis and food production. You'll be learning key insights for vertical farming success from leading industry operators, growers, and executives. If you're a grower or owner looking to optimize your existing or new indoor cultivation facility, or anyone looking to cultivate more and less space, we've got you covered. Cultivation Elevated, sponsored by Pip Horticulture. Hello and welcome to another episode of Cultivation Elevated, sponsored by Pip Horticulture. I'm here today with Drew Nowak, CEO and founder of Freedom Green in Michigan. Thanks for uh, taking some time today to uh, show me your facility. Yeah, let's get into it a bit. Yeah, thanks for thanks for coming up. Thanks yeah. for making the trip. You know, for our listeners out there, can you kind of describe the facility that we're in, you know, location, size, and kind of what it was before it was this? Yeah, we're in uh, Kalkaska, Michigan, so we're... Uh, about an hour and a half south of the bridge here, just east of Traverse City, Michigan. This property was a, was a field of trees before we got here. We were fortunate enough to find it about two and a half, three years ago. You know, it was a, it was a vision that we made into reality. We were a 21,000 square foot cultivation facility. We are just, just cultivators, adult use, and some medical product as well. Tell me a little bit about yourself growing up or your background um, and kind of how all this came together. Yeah, so I grew up in uh, De Pere, Wisconsin, which is just a, a burb of Green Bay, so a big Packer fan here. Grew up in a hardworking blue collar family. Dad was a part of a, and owns a steel manufacturing business. Moved Moved over to Michigan when playing college football at Western Michigan University and then was fortunate enough to uh, sign an undrafted free agent contract with the Jacksonville Jaguars in the NFL. Moved on to the Seahawks a couple years later and then a short stint with the Chiefs and injuries plagued furthering my career. Finished my degree at Western Michigan in engineering management mm. and then uh, started working in steel actually to start in Kalamazoo. Stayed, uh, stayed local to the college. After that, you know, I, I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to find something like football, like I would wake up every day and, and compete and have that and feel that competitive spirit. And I said, why not choose cannabis? And we were talking earlier and I said, I never grew a plant before we started this opportunity. And uh, you know, now I grow thousands on a daily basis. So there has been a, a ton of learning throughout this process, but um, I'm truly blessed to be a part of this industry. Awesome. Yeah, we also talked about like, you know, the growing part, it's a big part of it, but it's definitely not all of it. And you can grow a great plant, but doesn't necessarily guarantee success. So you had a lot of decisions to make when you first got into, you know, in the design process. Um, how important for you was it to really take in like consideration for like this main aisle or this main corridor? Yeah, process flow is really important for us. Um, we just didn't want to be restricted for any any reason, whether it was pallets of dirt, soil, whatever, sure. individuals, movement, transplanting, anything like that. So it was really valuable for us to make sure that this room was was wide and. Uh, yeah, what's the width on this corridor? I think it's about. 10 12 feet 12 feet wide so uh and the units obviously in the hallway make that you know sure. make us need to be a little bit wider plus with our irrigation system out here as well so we want to make sure four feet minimum four feet at all times what are some of the areas that you focused on specifically well, let's maybe talk about like the design and some of the engineering components and some of the decision making that you made in terms of mechanical electrical and kind of plumbing decisions everything was really you know obviously you know plant oriented for equipment sizing and stuff like that. But for us, it was really process oriented, you know, least amount of moving parts. We have a, a long hallway, a wide hallway, able to move plants and product and supplies up and down very easily. Maintenance on the inside, very simple. So everything for us has really been least amount of moving and, you know, helping our people spend their time working more on plants than on moving plants and moving themselves. And a lot of that process orientation, did that come from football or steel or a combination of both? I would say like more logic. We didn't have a ton of experience or we have, I had not seen a lot of grows. You know, I maybe saw two or three grows before even jumping into this, but really it was just a, the overall full spectrum view and thought of how would we operate? How would we move personally in this facility if we were doing it? trying to make it as easy as possible for our employees. What were some of the biggest challenges um, kind of getting started from like a design standpoint? And I know there's a lot of opinions out there and uh, a lot of people claiming that they're experts in certain areas and things like that. Yeah, I think, you know, we were we really were unsure and, and trusted a lot of the, the engineers and design teams uh, early on. You know, we were very fortunate. The mechanical contractors that we work with had some cannabis experience. So we were very lucky there. Um, the electricians we had had some experience building facilities as well. So the contractors that we work with really helped us and guide us throughout the process. 
and uh, they did a very good job. Awesome. And have you ever done anything from a startup standpoint in construction like this before? Or was no, this was my first, first. Yeah, this was my first uh, opportunity. I had a lot of mentorship from my father, who GCs a lot of his uh, builds at his company. Um, but for the most part, this was my you know thrown to the wolves opportunity. <laughs> Well, that's a sink or swim, right? Yeah. Um, what about the name? The name to me, um, you know, I mean, freedom right now is such a hot topic, but freedom green, like, you know, what, what can you tell me about kind of how that came to be? Yeah. So we came up with the name with, you know, with, with the veterans in mind. Michigan has over 600,000 veterans and we wanted to have that Midwest Americana blue collar type feel. Uh, we, you know, we give back to veteran programs, provide meals during the holidays, you know, anything we can to be a part of the veteran community. You know, Northern Michigan, you walk into any small municipality, any village, town, you're seeing active duty, military, fallen vets. You see the history of that town and it's, it's America. And so, you know, we, we really wanted to, to be proud Americans as well in the name. Uh, but also, you know, the green aspect is, you, you know, our, our motto is sustainably made, simply clean. We try to make everything as, a, as efficient and waste less as possible. We don't want, you know, minimal waste. Uh, we reclaim water here. We reuse about a thousand gallons of water per day. And you're reclaiming mainly through condensate recovery yep, yep, through condensate. the HVAC system. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, so we we recover that, re RO it, and then reintroduce to the plants. So you know everything we do is is energy conscious, waste conscious, environmental conscious. Did that drive a lot of the decision making with your equipment selection? You know we've got LED. Um, you've got mobile racking and multi tiered situations. Um, Tell me a little bit about, I guess, how you selected your lighting, how you met Pip, and some of those kinds of stories. Yeah, so a lot of it was recommendation based. Um, our original director of cultivation, uh, he recommended Grow Ray, and we, you know, we saw plants under those lights, and we were very impressed. And we really liked the durability and the longevity of those lights. We have not had a light fail yet, and we've had wow. them operating for two years. So we were, you know, really thankful for those guys. With Pip, that was kind of a new. A new venture for us you know a lot of people have that single tier hps experience and even our original director of cultivation have that hps experience but you know we wanted to be kind of new age we wanted to be different and we wanted to maximize our space in our footprint and so we thought pip and was pip was recommended to us we thought that that would be a great you know addition for us to maximize our canopy you know in our grow rooms and you know pip is very aligned with that Midwest Americana. I mean, they're down in Grand Rapids, Michigan, a couple hours south of you, so that doesn't hurt at all either. Was there any hesitation um, about multi-tier from anyone on the team? Or did you have to like go see it in action somewhere to like see it and believe it and touch it and feel it, or were you like, no, this is this is the path we're going on? I think there was a there was a ton of hesitation with it. You know, it was more it was a push by us a lot once we found out about it. Um, my father and I, and so, you know, there was a lot of, you know, we're unsure, how, how are we gonna work on that second level? Is it gonna be safe? How will the plants grow up there? Will they get, you know, the same amount of attention? But, we, you know, we've worked through our processes. We've really dialed in how we maximize all of our efficiencies with that as well. And it's been it's been great working with, with those racks. And you made a couple of strategic decisions too um, in terms of uh, what we refer to as the elevations that you've set to. So the first tier elevation is a taller elevation and when I say elevation I'm talking usually distance of tray between like top of light or something like that and then on the second tier it's actually a little bit shorter can you kind of elaborate on some of why that is yeah so you know it's a lot of it's the different cultivars you know you have shorter squattier plants and taller lankier you know farther spaced plants so we really wanted to be able to kind of grow based on the genetics that we receive and the the demand for those genetics. So if there's a demand for, you know, a uh, in more indica-based, lower squattier plant, then we wanted to have the ability to do that. We also wanted to have the ability to grow those, those longer lanky ones. And, you know, we do also have lighting controls that help us with that as well. But, uh, you know, we definitely wanted to have that, that adjustment ability with our cultivars. And so when you got started, um, accessibility on the second tier um, there were the catwalk systems and the platforms weren't out then, so you were using what ladders, lifts. Yeah, we had uh, scaffolding, scaffolding originally, um, and I believe we were one of the original or one of the first groups to test out the platforms with Pip. Oh, cool! And as soon as we tried it, we we wanted them, so whenever they were ready, we we purchased them. Nice. Yeah. And how has that changed their, your workflow and your efficiencies? Well, people feel safer uh, operating on the second level, and um, it's just cleaner, cleaner and safer for us. So. Really, it's been a huge benefit to our operation. Awesome. 
One thing we talked about earlier is leadership style and culture and how critically important that is in any business, but specifically in the cannabis space. Can you highlight, you know, how you view your leadership style and kind of, you know, some of the things that you do to, you know, have such a tight niche culture that I got to experience here today? Yeah, definitely. So we're a team here and we, you know, we like to run ourselves like a team and I guess I would call myself the coach maybe. Um, but what, what I feel is very valuable is, is how we empower our employees, how we give them responsibility, we give them the ability to work, we're not breathing down their backs. And by doing that, we've created kind of comfortability in, in the workplace and confidence in their abilities and what they do. So we trust them tremendously to do the right thing. We do have guidance, we have leads, we have a director of cultivation, we have all that, but really our people are, are very well trained and they just go, they just go do their thing. What do you think separates you from the herd here in Michigan a bit with, um, you know, other cultivators and things like that? Yeah, you know, I, I know a lot of people say it, but I truly believe we are craft at scale. You know, we're not producing thousands of pounds on a monthly basis, but we are pr able to produce, you know, four to 500 pounds on a, per month. And we're able to control every aspect of how the plant grows, how we dry cure and how it leaves. And I believe we're doing it very well. So for us, it's just maintaining that quality, increasing that quality, and getting people to understand, you know, the type of quality that we produce. And some of the decisions that I saw that you made speak loudly to that. Um, it's not every day that I see that a product is being hand trimmed as an example, especially at scale. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on kind of why you're choosing to put more labor into something? Definitely. Um, you know, we have a lot of caregivers that work that work for us that were caregivers in the old Michigan system and and for them and for from what I've learned you know you want to keep the integrity of the bud you know we want to see those orange hairs we want to see the trichomes we want to see what this flower look like you know pre-drying and I believe and we believe that it, that it matters to the consumers so you've got two drying rooms yep you were saying this one's designed for full plant hanging yeah full plant hang so uh we'll be in here we'll Plants will be in here about 10 days. And then uh, like Dave here, we're, we'll be, be bucking the plants. We cut them, cut them down and we start bucking them in the bins. And as soon as they're bucked in the bins, we'll start trimming. How do you like the new drying setup? Oh, we love it. I mean, we have some nice big plants coming in here, wet plants, and it, it fills. I mean, you could, there's 500 hooks in here. Yeah, so awesome. that's a lot of, you know, we fill a whole room. Is really nice. Do you ever have to like adjust the set points from uh, for density depending on cultivar, or do you pretty much keep it pretty fixed to where it is? Yeah, we'll we'll move them. Some of them are you know the shorter, little bushier, bushier something. plants. We'll we'll widen them out, but for the most part, we can fit full rooms in here really nice. Awesome. Yeah, it looks great. It smells great. I I saw a ton of efficiencies out there, um, kind of starting with your main corridor. Your main corridor is I think 12 feet wide. Um, a lot of people when they're in the design process. They think that these are empty corridors. They don't realize like how much stuff is stored there. So can you maybe talk a little bit about, I guess maybe let's get into your HVAC a little bit, which is located in your corridor strategically um, and some of the kind of other rationale for putting stuff in that in that hallway. Yeah, so I mean, there's it's storage space as well. We had a pallet of cocoa outside of one of the rooms. So there's, you know, there's opportunity there, but you know, we're, we're harvesting plants, we're moving plants up and down the hallway, we're moving pallets and supplies in and out of the facility. You know, there's just a lot of need for product movement in our processes. And I, you know, I don't want people bumping shoulders and I, I want it to be a safe environment as well. So we, we felt like it, it was a need for us to have that much space. Plus the units in the hallway, very important for us to maintain them, you know, maintenance on inside. Um, very easy for our, our HVAC crew to come in and work on those and uh, not interrupt the flow of our facility. And you elected for a four pipe system, which from an engineering standpoint, would be the most efficient that you can elect for. Was that driven by the engineers predominantly? Yeah, it was recommended by um, our mechanical contractors. And what's really nice about our compressors as well is that it's, it's a dual compressor system. So, you know, the, the units can operate on one. You know, you're not necessarily having to utilize them both. But if there is a failure, it is, there's You've a backup. you got some built-in redundancy into yeah. it. Nice. And then from a design standpoint, I thought what you did in the mother room um, from a proximity standpoint and a process standpoint was really smart. So your clone room is just a little offshoot of your mother room. So you're not traveling any great distance or actually even going into a central corridor again. That's a very self-contained area. And, um, you know, you are 
basically propagating in the same space as well. And we were talking earlier about um, non-beneficial stress. And, you know, because there is beneficial stress with these plants where you can push them and, you know, get different outcomes or desired trait expression. But there's also lots of touch points or labor touch points where you can actually devalue the product. And so people tend to compound stress. And what I noticed through walking through your facility is you, you, you looked at different ways to alleviate multiple stress events and to keep things. Was that by chance? Was that strategic? You know, what? what? I think it was like kind of learning what worked best for us. Um, and so we, it's like a third, three person process and we clones, we have somebody cutting clones. Mm -hmm. We have somebody that, the, that they, we give the inventory to that cuts them, strips them. And then we have somebody that's poking them. So it's like, it's a very efficient process. And we have a decent amount of clones to take when we do um, propagate for a new room. So for us, it was really like, let's find the best way for us to make this, you know, not a multiple day process. Something that you said too is, you know, there's no investors in this. This is a family, blue collar, um, you know, this is a, a vision, a dream to, to do something that is your way. Um, and, you know, there's obviously learning in, with that. But the fact that you haven't grown a plant previous to this is pretty impressive. Um, also, the fact that your facility is so clean, you're two years in operations and like, you look like you moved in two months ago. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, your standards for sanitation or kind of like what the expectation is for sanitation? Yeah, I mean, I want people to be able to eat food off the floor in here. That's kind of our expectation. Uh, I, we were joking earlier, I say, we clean 90% of the time and work on plants 10%. There's no excuse for our environment. You know, if we have a dirty environment, that's the, there's the ability for mold, for pests, for mildew, whatever. We're taking that out of the equation by our cleanliness. We're cleaning every room on a daily basis before the end of the day, before people leave. And we do a deep clean on at the end of the week. So everything is everything about cleanliness is important to us. Sure. Yeah, it shows. I mean, it's like I said, I've been to about five or 600 facilities across the country. And when you're like, I've been here for two years, I was thinking, man, they really maintain this facility at a level that it should be. Yeah. So, well, obviously we have an overhead door down by the truck bay. So shipping and receiving very important to us. Um, but we've, you know, 42 inch doors going into our rooms, the 48 inch door coming into this storage room. We didn't know what we were going to need um, to, to travel through these rooms. I almost wish that we had 48 inch doors f into our flower rooms. Yeah. Um, but looking at what, what we have now, it is just, it helps us. We can do whatever we need to do. Everything comes in a pallet. We can move our pallet somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that definitely was us trying to have some foresight with issues we might have had in the future. What about um, like cultivar selection? You guys have quite a bit of diversity here, which I think is really critical for success. But yeah, talk to me a little bit about, you know, kind of a rundown for our listeners of maybe how many varieties you're growing and kind of why you grow certain things over other things. We have 30 to 35 cultivars at all time. We've had 50 at times. Early on it was, we just had caregivers bringing, bringing in their, their plants because we didn't know. We didn't know what, what would work best for this industry, what people wanted. You know, I know there's a huge market for the THC chasing, but we talked earlier about chasing that experience. You know, we're looking for a higher flavor, higher terpene content, while maintaining those THC levels. And really, we wanna grow for the people. You know, it doesn't matter what I like, it doesn't matter what you like, it matters what the people want. Nice. So our goal is, tell us what you want and we'll grow it, you know? And so it, it takes, it's taken us a while to find kind of, you know, our, our, our starting lineup of cultivars. We're kind of, we're getting there, mm -hmm. but we're constantly changing them out on a, you know, monthly, couple monthly basis. When you brought in all those genetics from caregivers, I just gotta ask, it's sometimes it's like bringing like a Trojan horse into your facility. Did you guys go through some pretty intense like IPM quarantine and lessons and screening? Or? Yeah, we were, I mean, to be honest, we were very fortunate. We didn't have any any oh, problems man. with the, with the caregiver product coming in. Um, we, we also had went and looked at all this, the genetics before sure. we came in, we brought them in. Um, but I, you know, I'll be fully transparent. We've gone through the gamut, you know, there's a lot of facilities that will sit here and tell you that, you know, they're squeaky clean, but we've definitely had uh, problems to go through and I'll, I'll, you know, we'll fully admit that, but you know, we've learned from that um, and we've grown from that and you know, our facility, you know, is operating the way it should. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was tight in there and you know, any grower that tells you they haven't dealt with all the problems, they're not a real grower in my opinion. And if you haven't dealt with those problems, you will at some point. Yeah. And 
gosh, getting to the resolution in an efficient manner is, I mean, that's the difference between success and failure for a business. If you could go back um, before you started this, you know, and, and this is really almost like a message for maybe someone who's just like you, who's like, you know, I've never grown a plant before, but I'm called to this industry and I'm going to, I'm going to give it a go. What would be like one thing that you would have told your, you know, your, your past self or maybe one of these listeners who something that you learned that was just so critical for success? Yeah. Early on, I was very impatient. I was impatient about the process and I just wanted to get up and running because I thought we were going to miss out. And really the, the time that it took for us to get to this point has been like tremendously valuable for me to, in my growth in this industry and learning this plant and very valuable for this company. And so, you know, I would say trust the process. And I know that it's hard to say that and, and, to, and to believe that, but really if I wouldn't have learned and slowed down and, and gone through the failures, you know, I would, we definitely wouldn't be here. So what's the future look like for, for the company? What do you, where, where do you see the company going, you know, and, and the state of Michigan as well? Yeah, you know, right now we, we still need to figure out and be the best that we are in, the, in, the, in this space. Um, it's very hyper competitive in, in, in Michigan. There's a lot of people doing a lot of things, but we're gonna stay in our lane. Uh, and I'd rather pick one thing and be the best at one thing than do 10 things and be average. And so for us, we're here and maybe, maybe eventually we'll have some other secondary products. We'd love to do you know, some rosin in the future. But again, we're gonna stay in our lane and uh, we wanna be the best operators in Michigan. Well, where can people find your product and what should they look out for? Um, and if you have any like recommendations or particular varieties that you're just really proud of. Yeah, um, so we're pretty much throughout the entire state um, because of the partners that we've worked with. You know, we've worked with Loom Cannabis. We sell bulk to those guys. We've worked with Gage in the, in the state as well. And we also work with some, some smaller mom and pop um, locations. We've worked with Noble Goods in Southwest Michigan. Um, we work, we just sold, sent some product today to a group in Battle Creek, Amsterdam cannabis, um, lighten up in Flint, but we're, I mean, we're really, it's kind of like a case by case basis. We, we want to get our brand out there and our name out there. Um, so we really, we're looking to partner with great people, with great groups and, uh, creating great partnerships. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate the hospitality. Um, you've been super generous with your time today. I'd be super proud if you were my son and you, and you pulled all this off, not, um, you know, not having a lot of experience going into construction as well as, and this isn't just construction. I mean, this is like very specialized construction. It wasn't like you just, you know, built a commercial building. Um, the, the engineering that goes in these facilities is, is mind bending and it takes yeah. years just to understand the vernacular that's being spoken. Uh, but yeah, you guys have got a, a world-class facility and I think you're going to be really successful if you stay in your lane and, and focus on being the best. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for another episode of Cultivation Elevated, sponsored by Pitt Porticulture. Stay tuned and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to Cultivation Elevated. Full show notes for each episode, which includes a summary, key takeaways, quotes, and any resources mentioned are available at pithorticulture.com forward slash podcast. Be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're enjoying the content and getting value from these episodes, please leave us a rating and a review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash cultivation elevated. We'll be sure to read these out on future episodes.